In this video, we are making a ray tracer in plain JavaScript. We'll do this in 10 minutes and you'll see that all we need is actually two or three bits of math. Let's get some basic setup out of the way. HTML file, title ray tracer, and add a canvas. So based on height of the canvas attributes are for the amount of pixels, 250 by 250. And the ones in the style stretches the canvas out on the web page. Let's create a JavaScript file and link it. Then we get the canvas using query selector and get the context from the canvas, which is what we use to draw things. First, we're going to write a function that just helps us put pixels onto the screen. We use a 2D array of colors as input. So we loop through that, where each color is an array of three values for RGB. We set the fill style and then call the fill rect function to make a one by one dot on the screen. Let's test this by making such an array filled with color cyan, for example. And changing a specific pixel changes it on the screen as well. Let's go to our whiteboard and take a look at how it all works. Light bounces around on a bunch of things and enters the camera from a direction. In real life, the way that the camera knows where light comes from is with the lens and the light from the same place gets focused into one pixel of a rectangular sensor. For our simulation, we already know the direction light is going, so the camera can just be one point. It's really hard to figure out which way to shoot a light ray from the light bulb so that it ends up in the camera, but we can do a hack and shoot the rays in the opposite direction, from the camera outwards. Light bounces the same way back and forth for the most part. Back to the code. We loop through each pixel and we want to find the direction the ray should point in, in order to show up there. Direction can be stored as a 3D vector with x, y, and z. y is up and down, x is left and right, and z is back and forth. For simplicity, we put the camera at coordinate 0, 0, 0 and have it point directly forwards. Each ray's x and y can just be the pixel's coordinates subtracted by half of its height to center it and z is just a fixed value, say 25. Basically, we're making the rays point through a rectangle in front of the camera point. If you have used any 3D software before, it forms a pyramid looking shape. The z value, 25, is the focal length. The larger it is, the more it points forward, and the more zoomed in the picture would be. The length of this vector is a weird value, so we have to normalize it to length 1. And there's a lot of vector math going on, and given that we aren't using a math library, we have to implement it ourselves. I'll go through these parts quickly. We write a function to find the magnitude or length of a vector using the Pythagorean theorem, and then we can normalize the vector by dividing it by its length. We pass this into a function trace which will tell us the color of the pixel. We also pass in the starting point 0, 0, 0, and the objects in 3D, which are just an array of objects with the position and size and a few other properties. For now, we'll just use spheres. Here are the general steps. Find which object the ray hits, find where that ray bounces, repeat step 1 on the bounce ray, and find the colors based on the stuff you hit. To find where a ray will go, we need to know what object it intersects and where. For spheres, here's what you do. Think of it as a point and find the closest distance the ray will ever get to it. When we draw a vector from the start of the ray to the center of the sphere and take its dot product with a direction vector, you find the lengths along the ray that's closest to the point, because the dot product casts the vector down onto the ray. The connecting segment forms a perpendicular, which makes a right triangle. And we can calculate the length of the perpendicular using the Pythagorean theorem. If it's less than the radius, the ray passes through the sphere. We also need the actual point of intersection. If we draw in a radius to the intersection point, this forms another right triangle with the same perpendicular and we use the Pythagorean theorem again to find the inside side. Subtracting this from the bigger segment, we get the distance to the intersection point along the ray. Then we multiply this distance by the actual direction ray to get the point of intersection. We'll make our function return whether it did intersect, the distance to intersection, and the actual intersection point. We will also need to write a wrapper function which calculates intersection for every object and finds the closest one. For now, we can just paint a pixel white if it collides at all, or else a black pixel. If we create a couple spheres, we do see it working. What if we add a color property to each object and have the trace function just return the object's color? Now we see a bunch of differently colored spheres, but everything is a solid color, but this can just be what it looks like if these spheres are actually lights and don't reflect anything at all. It may feel like we're very far off from the realistic rendering we want, but we are really just one step away. Reflections. 
You probably know the rules like how the angle of the light going into a mirror is the same as it going out. To represent the mirror surface, we instead draw a vector perpendicular to the surface. And light rays basically get reversed from this axis. You can do this by subtracting 2 times the amount it goes in the normal direction, which is found using the dot product to push it away. For spheres, this intersection points straight out from the center of the point to the intersection. It is also called a normal, and it completely controls how light bounces. Where we turn the normal as well from the intersect function. To use this, what we do is instead of just using the color of the object, we mix it in with whatever it reflects by calling the trace as a reflector ray, and blend whatever color that gives with our original color. Trace is now a recursive function, and to make sure it doesn't go on infinitely, we add a steps input and pass in steps minus one to the recursion, and stop when less than zero. We rename our color property to emission and add a reflectivity value. Most objects' emission would be zero, with the exception of lights. For emission, we can just add that onto the color. Our reflectivity value tells us how this blending will happen. So if it's zero, it would take none of the color. If it's one, it reflects all of it. There we go. All done. Now we can mess around with how the light works. Let's give stuff roughness, and make stuff not look like a mirror, but instead paper-like. Remember how reflections are calculated into the normals? And rough objects are really just bumpy when you zoom in. So what we can do is add a small amount of randomness to whatever the normal is. We need to also remove the current intersected object when you recursively call a trace, because sometimes the object hits itself. When you render, you'll see that everything looks a bit noisy but we can essentially just run the trace function multiple times and average them all out. And that's all I have in terms of code. Let's make a better looking scene.